it has been quite a journey for me, you know, and everything is sort of like, I cannot believe um, at, you know, at this point in time, how everything is just blossoming into a whole other, a whole other series of big events in my life that I thought wouldn't be happening at this point in time. You know what I mean? The, the 80s were when we were really big, but it's like there's just so much going on right now, Sandy, between, you know, with uh, with the Go-Go's and them, on, like on a personal level, it's a lot going on with me. And I'm just like, wow, <laughs> I haven't been as busy since the 80s, you know, <laughs> and, like in the 90s, things are, you know, over the years since the 90s, like things are spread out more. Now it's like, shit, I mean, I don't have a minute's time. All right, so you're going to have to walk me through that busyness and maybe that's exactly where we should start and then we'll work our way backwards if that's okay. So I know I know you've got this super book that's coming out in October. It's going to be released. It looks sensational. It reads brilliantly and it's kind of a tell-all. It's called, uh, it's called Made in Hollywood, All Access with the Go-Go's. So tell me. Have you seen it? I've seen the PDF for it. Yes. So... I just got I just got mine in the mail. Oh, fabulous. The, the actual book. I'm like, I have it in my little hands. It's like wow. I can't believe I did this. I really did a book. I mean, I mean I made a book. I'm a photographer. I'm an author now. I mean I'm like wow. It's insane. <laughs> I can imagine you how proud you must things. be. You discover all these things about yourself, you know? Yep. Um the, you know, I was just uh, thank Christ at the last a uh, year and 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 well a year and a half really but the last year uh has been i was been so busy writing this book and putting together the photos you know um that i it's kept me from going crazy when most yeah. people are yeah. sitting around you know twiddling their thumbs yeah. i've been on the phone every day with the, with the fellow that helped me organize this and get this together working you know yeah um, yeah, so yeah. now i totally I'm, relate yeah. to that very fortunate in that respect so i'm i'm super excited i mean this is the culmination of you know of um well since 1978 these photos go back till from 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 me uh, from 78 79 when i drove to la in my father's pickup truck and my friend from high school was you know my my uh, (laughs) co-pilot driving to la knowing three people in la and leaving Baltimore and telling everybody the next time you see me, I'm going to be a rock star. Crazy shit that you do when you're, you know, 21 years old, you know, anything's possible, you know? And I I mean, thank God you really, really believe it. I certainly, I absolutely believe that I was going to make it. I was going to go to, go to California and I was going to make it, you know? So it says a lot about the power of positive thinking, no matter what age you are, doesn't it? If you tell yourself something and you really do believe it, it it tends to happen. You know, you know, I have always believed in the power of positive thinking. It's like you know, if you want to get sick, you you can. You know how you can make yourself sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You can make yourself better. You can do a lot, mind over matter stuff. And I mean, I come from just a very typical middle-class family. My father worked on the waterfront. So did my brother. So did my father's father. And, you know. um, So what did they think about you leaving? I mean, packing that car up and heading to LA and and, and aiming to be a musician. They were completely freaked out. And I, at the time, of course, I wasn't thinking anything about it. I was too busy looking forward. But, you know, in retrospect, I think, oh, my God, you know, there goes there the baby of the family in in her father's pickup truck going to drive to to Los Angeles knowing three people. You know, when really what they wanted me to do was go to college like my brother did. Of course. Um, Yeah. You know, and follow do something a little bit uh, normal. (laughs) <laughs> more logical, more logical, but say, you know, not some crazy dream, not, not, but I, they knew how passionate I was. I mean, everything in my life was about music. Every penny I got was spent on music in, in you know, whether it was magazines or certainly records and 
better better equipment stereo equipment and you know drums and yeah i mean guitars everything it was all it was concerts you know going to every concert that yeah. came to baltimore yeah. yeah it's all i could do it's all i could think about yeah so well, you know the, the minute i could do it i left yeah no, i get that and and oh, we t oh. we tended to up and leave a lot earlier in those days and be independent than what kids are oh. doing today too they 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 seem to be stuck in their nice cushy little ways these days and not ready to take a chance at all but i guess that's understandable too given the way the world is but gina when did you first discover that that drums were your passion that that you were so um that you were so into music well i I mean, I was I was always in the music since I can ever remember because I my mom and dad, there was always music playing in our house and they loved dancing. Oh, and I, my brother and I would be so embarrassed because they'd get up and start dancing in front. Of, we're like, oh my God, they're embarrassing us, John. Look at them, and, you know. Uh, but they they could really they were high steppers. Those two could really dance, and they loved music. So it was always music in our house, and I just. It, it became a part of me. It became something that I looked forward to. And then I found my own, my own sort of music that I liked. Well, I did. I liked Count Basie. I mean, they loved Count Basie and, yeah. and you know, I mean, everybody, any, any big band stuff they loved. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the era. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I certainly had an appreciation and I still have even more of an appreciation now because I understand it a hell of a lot better. Um, but then, you know, when my brother would buy records, I'd start, I, when he was out of the house, I'd grab his record and play it and sneak it, you know, <laughs> scratch it all up. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I, I was, you know, I was playing his, his Stones records and Beatles records and, you know, and Led Zeppelin records. And, and I was like, Oh my God, I love this. I love this. And then I was like, I remember it was a big deal every Sunday to watch the Ed Sullivan show mm -hmm. um, on channel two. It came on Sunday nights at like seven o'clock or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the thing. We all sat down to watch it. And of course, they'd always have some incredible musical guest. Yeah. You know, of course, everybody was on that show. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember seeing the Beatles on that show. And I was like, oh, my God, I love this. I, I want to be on that stage. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And then what really changed everything was in 1969, my brother took me to my first concert. And that was Led Zeppelin opening for The Who. Okay. Wow. That's, Good concert. That was my first first concert Led Zeppelin opening for the who um and I like lost my mind I knew I had an epiphany at the age of 11 I knew that that's what I wanted to do that's all from that moment on I didn't care what instrument I played I just wanted to be on that stage uh -huh. I loved it I I was just mesmerized by what uh -huh. I was seeing <laughs> and then to have two bands like that be the first thing you see absolutely well, no wonder Christ, you know, it doesn't yeah, get much yeah. better than that. Yeah. Um, so why the drums? How did they come about? Um, the, the drums came about because they were the easiest instrument for me to play. And that's how that happened. I, you know, I tried uh, guitar, I tried bass. Um, and uh, when I saved up my allowance money and bought drums, I sat down, picked the sticks up, and it just felt right. It felt natural. It I didn't have to think at all. I wasn't fumbling around on a fretboard, you know. I would just and what I would do, I would I would put records on and learn. That's how I learned to play guitar and any, you know, that's how I learned to play drums. I would put my favorite records on, put my headphones on, and play along with the record. Your parents must stuff. have thought you were mental sitting in your room you know, playing yeah, drums. They, didn't, can you imagine? I have my drums in my bedroom, okay? And, you know, my parents are in the same house. Yeah. The windows the windows are open. It's summertime, and I'm beating the hell out of the drums. But and back then, the neighbors didn't care. They're like, oh, that's a little Gina shock up the street. That She plays drums, like, all the time. You know, <laughs> nobody cared. Everybody thought it was just, like, so funny and weird that this but, young girl is playing yeah, drums. Yeah, but in those days... I mean, people didn't sit at home playing drums, but certainly little girls didn't sit at home playing drums. Yeah, right. So that's why I think people like kind of didn't call the cops on me. They couldn't believe <laughs> I was playing the drums, you know. And my mom and dad were just so tolerant and beautiful about it. They knew that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think they could see that this was a gift. 
Uh. You know, because it really was. It's like something that I could just do. I'm not the greatest at what I do, but I'm good at what I do. And it's definitely a gift. I don't know how or why I can play drums, but I just, I don't know. You know, everybody has something they can do really well. Yeah. And that's and that was it for you. So you packed up the car and you've moved to LA, thinking that you're going to get onto that stage and uh, and be a drummer in a band somewhere. What happens next? So I drive to LA and I I uh, stayed with a friend of mine, Steve, who uh, who ha- I had stayed at his house the year before. I'd been to LA and uh, San Francisco, been to the West Coast in 1978. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with John Waters, his films, John Waters, the filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Well, there was an, an actress in there called Edith Massey, the, the egg lady. Right. So she was in the neighborhood that I moved in when I was 20 and called Fells Point. Fells Point was a very hip neighborhood in, in Baltimore City. And, um, you know, it was kind of like, uh, you know, poets and kind of freaks and right. just but the, the bohemian place. sort of place to be yeah very cool place let's put it edgar Allan poe died in the gutters of fells point a hopeless oh. opium addict okay right. it was right okay. on, on the water ships came in it was all kind of it was carrying on it was great right um um so i would go in she had a a, a thrift store called edith's, edith's shopping bag and i would go in and visit her and one time i went in she's like Oh, Gina, I'm going to put together a punk rock band. You want to join? And I was like, yes, Edie. She said, we're going to California, New York. Absolutely. Yeah, count so me. we got these two other girls and we put together a set and boom, we were off. My first my first uh, plane ride, well, you know, um, and it was thanks to Edie. And and then I met people when in New York and L.A. and San Francisco. And um, uh, when I got home, I knew that I was going to leave. I I knew I had to go back and do what I felt very passionate about. Uh And uh, I went to New York for a while, went to LA for a while, went to San Francisco for a while. You know, I went back home, saved up my money for like a year and I came back and I I decided on that trip that, that, that LA was going to be the easiest place for me uh, to live because it was most affordable out of all the places and you know the, those three places were really happening in a big way. It was also the center of the, the LA would have been the center of the music business at that time, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, but San Francisco had a thriving music scene, really. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, as did New York, Blondie yeah. and the Dead Boys. There was a lot going on there. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, um, of course. So you get to LA and you're there, and how do you fall into the lap of the Go Go's? Oh, so I. Um, put up my name in a bunch of stores, music stores, record stores, you know, drummer looking to join a band, my influences, blah, 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 how long I was playing. Um, I got into bands right away. Um, and they were bands with all guys and myself, which was pretty typical uh, at that time. And, and I guess they just, I, I never had a problem getting in any bands because I guess guys were like, Oh wow, it's a girl that can play drums. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oddity. Yeah, a novelty act, you know. So whatever. I I I I didn't have a problem. But the guy that I was living with at the time, Steve, was like, Gina, there's this band that go goes, you need to go see them and you're gonna kick that drummer out and join that band and, and it's gonna be you're gonna be famous. So I did go to see them and I thought, oh my God. They're so bad, but they're, you know, like an ugly dog. It's so ugly. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, it was like the go They were so bad. They were great. Right and I was smiling. I was ear to ear smiling. And it's sort of like, because I was like fucking so uptight. Like everything has to be perfect. Though. Everything, the way you play, it's got to be all perfect. Precision, precision. They were up on stage having fun. They were making mistakes. They didn't care. I was like, I really need that in my life. I'm a Virgo, man. I could use a little bit of that, right? <laughs> um, and I met them at, at Steve's brother, Doug, at his party, like a couple weeks later or whatever. And we, you know, we exchanged phone numbers. They were looking for a drummer. I'm looking to join. A, I said, I said, oh, I'm looking to join a band, even though I was in two bands. But I was like, I want to get in the Go-Go's because they'd only been together for like six months. And, you know, they were just really learning and figuring things out. And I, and anyway, so they came over 
And we played a couple songs and that was it. That was the end of it. You, you were know? in. The, the next day I, I left the other two bands and they fired their drummer and then that was it. That was the end and, of it. And you obviously brought them up to speed, got them to take their music more seriously and they imparted a sense of fun to you. Yes, yeah, it was a trade-off and it was perfect and it was needed to happen. It was like I brought in my insane work ethic and they gave me in return you know, lighten up about it, okay? It's not so serious. Let's have some fun on stage. Let's not be so so incredibly serious about every little thing. And, um, you know, I needed that. And the combination obviously worked really well. And we just got, we did get busy down. And we stopped this bullshit of rehearsing a couple times a month. And we were rehearsing five days a week. You go to work, then you rehearse. And it didn't take long before it started to pay off because, you know, I knew when I saw them that there was something there that 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 needed to be uh, discovered i'll uh, use that word uh, uh yeah yeah uh, or nurtured and, yeah yeah and 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 it was the right fit fortunately yeah. for all of us and you know i paid attention to them and they paid attention to me and it worked beautifully and we got our asses working hard and before you know it we were we were selling out you know people lines around the block coming to see us you wouldn't have even been surprised by that would you because that was your self-fulfilling prophecy well i you know i honestly did think we were going to be huge i know that's just insane but i really did i thought oh well this is typical this is not, there's no one like us and we've got each other's back we are a girl gang don't fuck with us you know right. <laughs> and you all got on really well Famously, infamously famous. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was good. We all got along really well. Um, you know, we all had the same politics. It was uh it was us against the world, you know. How amazing. We were ready for anything. We were so, up for anything. And I heard you did get up to plenty. We got up to lots. Yeah. Typical. You, you, Typical you, you, that age. Hey, you're 21, 22, 23. Let's it's party. all about having a good time, but we, it was all there was a there was a purpose there was a you know there was a a, a guiding light somewhere in in the midst of all the insanity which should definitely be there at that age yeah i mean i wouldn't trade in a thing not not one minute you know of my life would i trade ever it was all worth it and the good and the bad amounts to you know the person and the band that we are this to this day which is, and i'm very proud of it and I'm happy you, it's the first time it turned out to be, you know. Yeah, you've got to be surprised that the Go Go's are still around and and uh, uh, and uh, doing so well today. I mean, that you yeah. couldn't have foreseen. No, I tell you what, I I never thought that we would be forty over forty years later relevant. <laughs> in, in, you know, in the music, I mean, but we are. I mean, Sandy, we can tour all the time. You know, it's just getting everybody to agree. You know, I mean. Me, I like to tour. I tour constantly if I can get the rest of the girls to do it. But I try my best. I'm dying to get back down to Australia. Oh, we would love oh. to have you here. Do I'm you know, dying. Well, you, we have to wait for COVID to pass by a bit. But then, yeah, please, please come down here. We'd love to see you. You've got a, a, a huge league of fans, as you well know, everywhere around the world. Um, it didn't take very long until you had that breakthrough hit. We got the beat, did it? Yeah, well, um, that and our lips are sealed, boom. Um, here we are in England opening for Madness and the Specials thinking, you know, America doesn't get us, fuck them. We'll go to England. They're going to get us right away. We're way ahead of the times. Uh, you know, they don't They don't know. I mean, we flopped in England. We come back to the States and we got the beat is sort of really, people are making a fuss about that, you know. The clubs are packed. They're playing it in the clubs constantly. You know, we're starting to get a big following and it's not it's not just in L.A. and New York. It's like it's like nationally we're starting to happen. So here we are, you know, out, out in another country thinking oh, America sucks. We come back and and there's some heat underneath of our music. They embraced um, you. And we come yeah. back to sold out everything, you know. And then we get a record deal here. It uh, You know, it wasn't easy to get a record deal, even with that. We, our manager Ginger was bringing in folks from every goddamn label in LA to come and see us play, and yeah. we were getting turned down left and right. Really? You know why? 
because we were girls. They didn't know what to do with you. No women that were that were hugely successful in in the business up until the go-go's happened. And they everybody turned us down until Miles Copeland and IRS Records. And they were a small little label. They didn't have much to fucking lose. They signed us. Right. And, and, for, and never looked back. For pittance, you know, but uh, it all worked out. How amazing. And you were really the driving force behind the band. I mean, not only just in terms of keeping time and setting the time on the drums, you really drove the pace all the way with the girls, didn't you? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I tried. I guess it's just my personality to be. I'm just when I when when I I mean music. I love music so much. Everything about it, every aspect of it, I completely and am absolutely in love with. And so you know, for me, you know, pushing the band harder and harder. You know, I it was just something that I couldn't help. And the girls, I guess, I think they needed it and they accepted it and they just thought, I mean, I'm a little crazy, but hey, you know what? Maybe maybe she's got something there. Penny, yeah. Penny stop! What sort of dog is it? Penny is a is a, a gigantic, uh, my little gigantic um, 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 fucking, look, I can't think straight. Um, stop. Chihuahua. <laughs> Duh, that was tough. That's you. It's usually my dog barking in the background here. Can you see her, Pen? Uh, Can you see her, Sandy? Penny, no, look no, at you, rotten kid. <laughs> look, look, she won't look. Look, she'll bark and look. Where are and you, Penny? Oh, there she is. Hello, <laughs> sweetheart. Pen, say hi. You, Sandy. She's an Australian <laughs> baby. <laughs> You're such a bad kid. She's so spoiled rotten. Oh, I've got one of those. Her. Yeah, yeah. But you know I'll get that. She's a rescue. She gets whatever she wants. Isn't that That's lovely? So That's nice. So Gina, you were you were taking photos. Uh, 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 you were taking photos across this entire journey. Yeah, I because I love photography. Um, um. And it's weird because it wasn't really a conscious thing. It was just something that was happening, like in my subconscious. Just click, click, click. Oh, I like click. Oh, that's cool. Click, you know. Um, and and I have all these photographs, and you know, over forty years of photographs of the band and my life, and I just. For the last at least decade, the girls in the band have been saying to me, Gina, you need to do, you need to put out a photo book. You really, right. and I've really wanted to, but I, I had to, I, it took a while to find the right person to collaborate with. And then I found this fellow, Steve Perget, and he, that was it, man. It was like, he and I got along great. He helped me organize. He came up, helped me go through all my photos. I mean, it was intense, but, and because there's so much to, choose from i mean and for me it's really hard for me to do it i can't be objective it's like i look at them and they all mean something I look at a, you know it is you had a photograph or a song it brings everything back from that moment in time and it's yeah and it's important to you you know of course so i have to have somebody else to help me figure this shit yeah. out yeah, because I can't get out of it myself. I'm constantly, I'm too involved. I'm yeah, too no, I get, I get that, I know? get that completely. So tell us a little bit about this extraordinarily good-looking book. Well, thank you for calling this story. It does. <laughs> it's like it's everybody a- would want one on their coffee tables. It just looks great. The the photo on the front is just brilliant. The colors are awesome, Doesn't and it, it's a really it. enticing kind of read there on a, a teaser that tells you what's inside so tell that my listeners photo tells it all from the go-go's at that point in time i feel you know this yeah looking at this photo yeah that really that really says it all right there um um and you know I, this is is definitely a uh, a photo book and i hadn't hadn't the intention of you know having so much text in it but it just wound up you know, they said, well, you need to write a little something with this. And it just kept <laughs> flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing because, you know, everything I look at, I, I, there's a story. Yeah. And then that leads into the next story, into the next one. And before you know it, I've got like over 30,000 words, which was not my intention. 
it, I started this out wanting it to just to be all photographs and then the captions in the back of where it is and what, you know, um, and, and it turned into something bigger than that, which, I, you, you know, which I'm grateful for because I learned, I became a writer and I didn't know I could do that, you know. I, yeah, you've written songs though, famously for for people like Miley Cyrus. So you you you've been a songwriter. Yeah, but it's a whole different thing. It's just uh, yeah, it's a whole different thing. It was, you know, that's present. I can sit down and write a song. That's one thing. But to um, to to revisit your life um, through photographs and be able to try to tell it in a really cohesive manner uh, when it's you know forty years ago. <laughs> 35 years ago it's hard it's um, amazing that your memory I'm, permits you to do that you know, my memory sucks sandy but you know what <laughs> i have since 1978 kept a daily planner ah. which i still have to this day which wow I, which look this is crazy because i've been sitting here working all day and as you can see here's my daily planner with all the shit wow. do, right okay i still do that so I got out since 1978, all my daily planners. And when I looked through it, it helped me put everything. It helped me organize it and make sense of it all. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, I'd write a couple things down here. What was going on that day? It was like, oh, my God, this happened then. And then that would spark another idea. And that sparked yeah, another. And yeah. so it, it, just, it just it went on and on. It yeah. snowballed. And it was like, whoa, I have so much to tell. And I could I could start another book right now. Of course, I certainly have enough photos to do another one, and there's never-ending stories. That's you know. Never so, ending. I love the fact that you take the reader with you on this journey, and you kind of put us as flies on the wall into what's going on. You really put us in very close proximity with 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 every photo, with everything that's happening in your life at that time. Is there an absolute favorite photo and story that goes with it that you've put into this book? I know that must be very difficult to to decide, but what, what, you've got to be able to point to something that's really your highlight. Oh, shit. I love that photo of myself and Jane Fonda, the fucking coolest woman in the world. I agree. I could not agree more. She's the one person I've not interviewed that is still on my bucket list to talk to. Even though I blame her for my hip replacements and my knee <laughs> knee operations and all of that. But uh, yeah, she's cool. She is so awesome, so lovely. And the reason the Go-Go's got back together in 1990 is because of Jane Fonda. Tell me why. Um, because, you know, we had broken up in 85. But then everybody started talking there this one call on that one back and forth you know in a couple of years um and then all of us got calls separately uh from jane fonda's people saying you know she wants to get she has wants to get this um green, green initiative on the ballot in in california do we want to be a part of it will we be will we do a show at universal amphitheater theater to help support this and we're like well we're all environmentalists and of course we will you know and animal activists of uh -huh. course we will um so you know we then we started talking talking a lot and then when we got together it was like all was forgiven it was because the thing that will shine through in this book is that at the end of the day we are family we are family and you know sometimes you don't like your family but at the end of the day you always love them yeah and we've been through so much shit none of us have been in relationships longer than we've been in relationship with each other it's like um, a marriage of four of you right it, it, yeah it's like being married to four other women and jane fonda got us together to play a show to do a show and believe me stepping on stage with the girls is like a fucking magical experience the chemistry is just incredible and uh, you know, doing that show, it was like, oh, my God, of course. And then we started booking shows that year. In 1990, <laughs> they, you know, our agent was already booking go-go shows the rest of the year. So it didn't take much, you know. And, um, you know, it's a process, you know. It, 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 being in a family, you know how it is, right? Yeah, sometimes you talk like, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> yeah, um, but we have much in common much in common and the right. things that we do have in common are big 
and important yeah. things. Well, none, none the least being the last 40 years of being together, of going through so much together, of achieving so much together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you really did pave the way for for girl groups to follow you, didn't you? You were the pioneers of that and you've opened the door for a whole lot of others to step on in. Well, that would that's kind of nice to, to think of it that, that way. That I hope so. I hope that we did because um, there's no greater compliment as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing better that you can do is, than to give, you know, other music girls, other girl little little girl musicians uh the thought that they can they too can do it that's and right that it doesn't possible. have to be just a male dominated world and anything is possible and i'm proof of it i come from like i said a blue collar middle class family very proud of it and everybody comes from somewhere sandy nobody wakes up and they're a fucking rock star or they're a huge uh, actor they don't you know i mean we all come from somewhere and then we work and sometimes we get a lucky break and it, and it happens. There's yeah. so many fucking incredibly talented people out there that are yet to be discovered, but they will if they are tenacious and they, you know, they keep, keep at it and they, you know, keep this, you're going to get a little fucked up along the way, but as long as you don't lose sight of, of what your goal is, then you're going to be all right. Gina Shock, the documentary The Go Go's happens to be on television just tonight. Here, we saw it uh, a year or so ago when it first came out, but it's uh, really it's on free to air television here tonight. And oh my gosh. how was that for you? That was a love fest. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it really was. I mean, that brought us all closer together seeing all that history and realizing that and this happened for me with the book as well <clears throat> yeah there were some times that were rough but ultimately the majority of the time was a fucking blast <laughs> was a blast and was such uh such a beautiful lucky uh incredible thing to happen to the five of us you know yeah Absolutely. We five were chosen somehow for things to happen and like how incredible is that? I don't know. I'm I am in disbelief to this day. I look at all this now, especially now, when I can appreciate it, when I have time to appreciate it, because at the time we were so very busy doing what we were doing, we didn't have time to appreciate what was going on around us. You know? That's all right. It's only it's only when you look back and arenas, you you know, the arenas that we were selling out, like we didn't we were just like okay, yeah. We're on the roller coaster, yeah, on yeah. the treadmill. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. How fabulous. Um, I'm very excited to have a copy of that book on my coffee table, as as should everybody else, because it's a beautiful, well, it's a beautiful piece of work, and uh, it's also an important document that really, uh, that, that documents a, a time a very special time in your life, but in all our lives, because we all, we live through that too. Absolutely. You know, congratulations. Um, and I, you know, I, you're just, I'm thinking of in excess and when we toured with them because they're, they're you know, Australian gentlemen. And um, we love those guys, man. We had a great time touring with them and it was so cool, you know, to see them, doing what we had just done we had just opened for the police all over the world we had just opened for them right we came back took like off a couple we had like a couple weeks off and then we went back and played all those arenas and in excess open for us and you know many of them and i was like wow this is cool it's sort of watching this happen again except where the headliner they're they're on their way up they're gonna be huge it's obvious <laughs> they're gonna be huge man they're so talented. They're so good looking. They're going to happen. Of course they did in a major yeah, way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gina, thank you so much for oh, being so been generous been with your time. It's been just lovely chatting with you. I'm so grateful to you for chatting with me and for, and for joining me face to face because I feel like I'm sitting with you in your lounge room with Penny also. Oh, it's I hope just sometime i would love that you'll well if i'm coming to you i'll let you know and if you're coming you here know, we would love to see it's congratulations absolute pleasure absolute pleasure thank you so couldn't much. agree more with you I thank you 
and um, thank you for, you know, pushing this book because it is like, it's my life, 40 years of my life there. So, Sensational. Thank you, We're going to love it. Lots of love, Gina. All the very best. Bye.